Hey everyone, this lesson is on regulation of the JAK-STAT pathway. So in this lesson, we're going to be focusing specifically on how the pathway is regulated. So we've talked about JAK-STAT pathway before. It can be activated by several extracellular ligands such as GM-CSF. It can also be acted by the TINs like erythropoietin, prolactin, thrombopoietin, and leptin. It can also be activated by the TERS like interleukins and interferons. So when a JAK-STAT pathway receptor gets activated by the TINs, the TERS, or GM-CSF, it activates the JAK protein kinase or Janus kinase, which autophosphorylates itself. When JAK is phosphorylated, it activates several downstream signaling pathways. One of them is the PI3K AKT signaling pathway, so it eventually leads to activation of AKT downstream targets, and it also activates the ras raf mec erc pathway, so it increases cell survival. And it also recruits the other protein known as STAT. In, in recruiting this protein, it also phosphorylates it, so JAK leads to the phosphorylation of STAT, and when it is phosphorylated, when STAT is phosphorylated, it recruits other STAT proteins, leading to homodimerization of STAT. So that homodimers then can enter the nucleus and bind to gamma-activated sequence elements or gas elements in the nucleus to lead to transcription and um, induction of gene expression involved in cell survival. Another set of proteins that can activate STAT independently of JAK include SRC protein kinases. Now, there are several different families of negative regulators of the JAK-STAT pathway. One of those is the protein tyrosine phosphatases, such as PTP1B, so protein tyrosine phosphatase 1B. These essentially perform what their name suggests. They dephosphorylate phosphorylated tyrosine residues. So they can dephosphorylate the JAK protein, essentially shutting off the JAK protein, and they can also dephosphorylate the STAT protein. So this is one mechanism by which the JAK-STAT pathway can be turned off. Another family of regulators of the JAK-STAT pathway includes protein inhibitors of activated STATs, or PIAS or PS. These essentially inhibit the transactivation of STAT proteins, and they also prevent STAT proteins from binding to gamma-activated sequence elements in the DNA. So they prohibit STAT homodimers from inducing gene expression. And the third family of regulators of the JAK-STAT pathway are the suppressor of cytokine signaling, or SOCS or SOX, and these proteins are induced by cytokines as opposed to the other two families of regulators which are always constitutively present in the cell. So protein tyrosine phosphatases and PS are always constitutively present in a cell and they can regulate the JAK-STAT pathway quickly. SOX, on the other hand, has to be induced by cytokines, but they can inhibit JAK from becoming activated, and they can also activate the ubiquitin proteasome pathway to lead to ubiquination of JAK protein kinase that eventually leads to the degradation of JAK. So again, SOX can inhibit the uh, JAK kinase, but they can also activate the ubiquitin proteasome pathway leading to degradation of JAK. So these can be potent inhibitors of the JAK-STAT pathway, and they are secondarily activated by cytokines. So anyways, this was a quick lesson on JAK-STAT pathway regulation. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Please also check out some of my other videos as well, and also check out the other JAK-STAT pathway video for more information on the JAK-STAT pathway. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.